about how my ex-boyfriend stole all my shit and then gave it to his new girlfriend. So a little background information, I was 23 and I had been dating this guy who we're gonna call Derek for two years. Now at first I thought that our relationship was perfect, of course you guys know how it goes. But then one day he came home from work and he told me that he had been cheating on me throughout our whole relationship. He literally had a full on relationship the past two years that him and I were supposed to be together with another girl. But yeah, he came home from work and he told me, listen, I don't wanna be with you, I really love her, you know, it's just not working out. So obviously I go and I find her social media and I tell her and she just blocks me. She literally just blocks me. And then he told me that she knew that he was also dating me at the same time. So whatever, fast forward, you know, he moves out, he moves in with her and he is slowly moving his stuff out of my apartment. Like it literally took him four months to get all of his stuff out of my apartment. Anyway, so the one day he calls me while I'm at work and he's like, hey, can I come get the keys? I need to get some of my stuff. So obviously this had been going on the past four months. So I was like, yeah, just come pick the keys up. So he does like for part two. Part two about how my ex stole all of my stuff and gave it to his new girlfriend. So like I said, he comes, he grabs the keys and he goes to my house. He's getting all of his stuff. When my neighbor, who is one of my friends, she's like freaking out, calling me over 10 times. Obviously I'm at work, so I can't answer the phone. And then I get a text from her saying that he's there with his new girlfriend. Well, I guess she isn't really a new girlfriend if he's been dating her the whole relationship that we had, but you guys know what I mean. So I'm freaking out and I call him and then I hear her in the background talking to my dog. Now, obviously I don't even want this girl in my apartment in general. So I'm like freaking out that she's trying to talk to my dog. So I'm yelling at him. I'm like, I want her out of the apartment. I'll call the police if you guys don't leave. Also tell her to get the away from my dog. So, you know, he says, okay, hangs up the phone and I call my neighbor and I tell her, call the police if she goes in my apartment again. And less than two minutes later, my friend calls the police because his girlfriend started breaking stuff in my apartment and she took my dog. Literally, like they drove away with my dog and then let it go in the middle of the woods. But I guess it's okay because I got my dog back. When I was 16, I had my first relationship, my first boyfriend, and he was very mentally abusive. And then one day it got physical. We met on Facebook, he sent me a friend request, and turns out after, he was actually my best friend's cousin. Everything was super good at first, you know, we would go out to dates, he met my mom. My mom wasn't really a fan of him, she actually tried to pin him against me, but I've already told that story. Before I even moved out of my mom's house when I was 16, I saw that he started getting very controlling. I had to give him my Facebook password because he said I've been in relationships, which I have, like I've been talking to people, but I've never had like a serious relationship where like my whole family knew I had a boyfriend and he's like I need your password because I don't know who you're talking to that was the first red flag but honestly again he was my first boyfriend so I didn't really like know how to go about this situation so back then I was like in my skirt era where I really wanted to wear like those nice tight skirts I used to love dresses and skirts and he was like um you're a slut you're a slut because you're wearing skirts and I was like okay so I had to wear pants Red flag number two, but let's keep going. Fast forward, I move out of my mom's house just because I'm in a very toxic environment. Her husband's, mm, let's not talk about it. So I decided to move in with my aunt, my sister's mom. And it was a good time. We were doing pretty good. There was no like episodes of like where he got jealous or crazy. And that happened a lot. This next part is gonna be very embarrassing. So I don't want you guys to say anything about it. I don't know what it was that we were arguing about that day, but he decides to break up with me and I was heartbroken like, I thought my world was going to end because this guy broke up with me. And I'm pretty sure it's a trauma response, but I'm very scared of people leaving me. Or at least I used to be scared of people leaving me. So I was like, no, don't leave me. Like I was begging, on my knees begging. Not literally, but you know what I mean. Because again, I just left my house and blah, blah, blah. I wasn't speaking to my sisters. I have two younger sisters, by the way. I wasn't speaking to them, so I literally was alone. Like I only had this guy and I think he took advantage of that. And mind you, he was 21 at the time I was 16. So in his response, he's like, you have to do something for me that's actually really worth coming back to you. <laughs> Just go to part two. By the way, I meant to say my mom's sister and not my sister's mom, my mom's sister. I'm trying to talk as fast as I can because you guys say I talk very slow. I'm gonna get judged a lot. Like you guys are gonna give me the bombastic side eye, but I don't care. You won't believe what he actually wanted me to send him. So he actually said, he's like, I want a picture of this, this, and this. And I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that. Like he wanted very explicit pictures. So he's like, whatever, that's fine. Um, I'll go see you later tonight. I forgot to say, I only moved in with my mom's sister until my grandmother's house was finished being built. Construction was all done. I moved into my grandmother's house and that day, that same day that I moved into my grandmother's house, before I decided
decided I wanted to change my Facebook password. I'm like, let me just change my Facebook password. Um, if I can't be in a relationship where someone trusts me, then let's not be in a relationship. So that night he comes over, I make dinner, we're eating. After dinner, we're like laying down and he's like, I've never been so disrespected in my life. And I'm like, what are you even talking about? I completely forgot that I changed my password. He's like, you changed your Facebook password? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, if you can't be in a relationship where you trust someone, like let's just not be in a relationship anymore. All of a sudden I feel his hand, like his open hand hit me right in the face, like right there, open hand. I was like, he slams my new phone across the room and it breaks into a thousand little pieces. I'm a very sensitive person, so I started bawling my eyes. He leaves my house. In my head, the relationship's over. No, he comes back the next day with a new iPhone 5C. It was April 18th. I remember like it was yesterday because I was like, absolutely not. Like, I'm not like, no, my birthday's April 23rd. Like, I'm not dealing with this. He was basically trying to buy me back by giving me a new phone, especially because he knew I wanted an iPhone and I had an Alcate. But I stood my ground um, and I broke up with him. Fast forward to like a year later, he like messaged me and he's like, I just wanna say thank you so much. You've made me change into a better man. And I just wanna remind you that what happened was because you changed your Facebook password. So he never said I'm sorry. He actually tried to blame me for what happened. So all I said was sure. Have a nice life and I never spoke to him ever again. And I've never let a man control what I do, what I wear, what I say, who I talk to. Am I wrong for leaving a wedding to go eat at McDonald's? Recently, my colleague invited me to her wedding, which happened yesterday. I was super excited and happy for her. Just in case, I asked her if there were any guest fees. She said, no, you don't need to pay me anything. On the day itself, everything went well until the reception, dinner time. To my shock, I was presented with a wedding menu that had prices on it. For example, steak, $50. Everything was ridiculously expensive, including the vegetarian options. At first, I wanted to question her because, well, she lied to me that I didn't have to pay for anything, but it was her wedding and I didn't want to spoil her day by embarrassing her in front of everyone. However, the only other option was to simply not eat, as I didn't bring enough money for both a meal and a ride back. But this was completely unfavorable as I had skipped my lunch to save space for the wedding meal and was pretty hungry. Suddenly, I remembered that I saw McDonald's about 5 minutes away from the hotel. As tactfully as I could, I asked the bride if I could make a quick stop to McDonald's as I didn't bring enough money for the reception meal. I said that I'd be back in time for the gift ceremony and cake. I thought she'd agree, but to my horror, she got really upset. She said that she put in so much effort to get this Michelin star restaurant service, yet I still wasn't happy. That I was trying to bring her down by saying that I'd rather eat McDonald's. Alarmed, I said that I didn't mean it that way. I just didn't have the cash for it. She then scoffed and said, whose fault is that? Mm. 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 Although I was trying to keep my anger, those words really pissed me off. So I told her, you are the one who lied that I didn't need to pay anything. Getting angry as well, she replied, what I meant was that there was no attendance fee. You literally assumed that you'd get a free five course dinner. Wow, you're cheaper than I thought. With the glare, she asked me to leave her wedding. I did, struck dumb and rather hurt. And on my way home, I grabbed a Big Mac, lol.